The intersection design tools are probably the, the most popular new feature in AutoCAD Civil 3D 2010. In this set demonstration, we'll take a look at um, we'll take a look at this new feature. Let's go ahead and get into it. So, in previous releases of 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 Civil 3D, we had the ability to model intersections using corridors, but it was a, a laborious and tedious process. Now there's a wizard um, that will help us go through the process of uh, of of the modeling an intersection. I'll go ahead and click on intersection from the uh, ribbon there and it wants to know the main road alignment for the intersection so I'll pick this street here and immediately the wizard will appear uh, that I was uh, referring to earlier. The first thing we needed to, design, to, to decide is the intersection corridor type. We can just crown the primary road or we could crown uh, both roads. We'll go ahead and just crown the uh, uh, primary road. And then that takes us to the next dialog. Uh, obviously in the process of designing an intersection you have decisions to make. Uh, how, what's the offset of the uh, uh, edge of pavement? What's the radius for the curb returns? How do you want to deal with the curb return profiles? Uh, what do you want the crossfall or lane slope to be? And that's the purpose of uh, uh, these uh, these buttons here. If I go ahead and click on offset parameters, this is where I could set the offset value from the um, uh, center line to the, the edge of pavement. If I click on the curb return parameters, this is where I can choose the radius for the curb return. And then notice as I, I flip from quadrant to quadrant, it shows graphically with some uh, this red symbology which uh, curb return I'm currently working on and that's very helpful because sometimes you just don't know based on the directions so as I click next next previous previous it'll show what curb return I'm currently working on and then we could set the radius and the uh, the, the curb return type if uh, if desired Next would be the uh, lane slope parameters. Again, this is the uh, crossfall. And again, as I click on the definitions, it shows me which uh, street I'm currently working on. We'll leave it at 2%. And then the curb return profile parameters. Uh, the curb returns need to be designed uh, vertically in addition to horizontally. And that's the purpose of this. And again, I can, uh, I can go ahead and click from quadrant to quadrant and set my, my profile parameters. Let's go ahead and click next and then we're going to go ahead and add to a, an existing corridor. I actually have a corridor started for the, uh, the, the, the street through here and we're just going to add on to that and that corridor is called roadway model. And the, the intersection wizard does indeed create a, a corridor. All right? it, it, it works with, uh, with corridors. And then we specify all the assemblies we're going to use. They already exist in the drawing um, and they'll, they, if, if not they'll get, uh, they'll get imported uh, for you. And we'll go ahead and click on uh, Create Intersection. As I do that, I not only want you to look up here for the corridor model, but I also want you to pay attention to what's going down here. This is actually a profile view of the uh, side road alignment. So the corridor is created. You will see it here, the, uh, the, the magenta colored lines. Um, and that looks fantastic. Um, but also I want you to take note of what, what happened down here with the side road profile. Before it was just a single blue line that went from the upper left to the upper right. Now it's got a bunch of PVIs that, that have been added. And when you think about it, it makes sense because if we're designing a, uh, a corridor, the, the, the two pr intersecting alignments, the, the profiles for those alignments must, must match. And that's what's going on here is it's setting the PVIs such that the side road profile matches the main road profile. If I click on that profile you notice there are these uh, lock symbols um, and this is telling me that these PVIs are locked based on the intersection design. Now if you wanted to modify this you could uh, for example maybe you want to unlock this dynamic PVI you want to move this down here you want to move this up there maybe you want to add some vertical curves that's okay you can definitely um, you can definitely do that. Next we'll do another intersection design. This time we'll do the uh, 
the, the, the T intersection here. So let's go ahead and click on intersection again. And again, we'll maintain the uh, primary, the crown of the primary road. In curvature and parameters, you'll notice an option here for widen turn lane for incoming and outgoing road. This is great. So um, for the next quadrant, I don't want this one in the upper right, I want the lower right one. Um, I would like to widen the turn lane for the incoming road. And what that's going to do is basically it'll create a turn lane for me for making a right hand turn from this road over to this road. I'm going to set some parameters for that. And we'll click, uh, we'll click OK. Next, we'll add to the existing corridor roadway model and create intersection. And you notice that it, uh, the, it added onto the corridor, as I would expect, and it added this turn lane. You'll see the turn lane transition here and go there. Okay, so the, the, the widening of the turn lane is another feature of the intersection that uh, is, is really nice. Once you create these intersections, you, you'll notice that you actually are creating several alignments for the curb returns and for the uh, offset alignments. And if you take a look at my prospector off to the left hand side, you'll notice a new feature of Civil 3D 2010. Um, the alignments can now be sub, uh, subcategorized. Um, you'll notice we have the center line alignments, which is what we're used to, but we also can uh, subcategorize the offset alignments that you see there and the curb return alignments, which we have a lot of now because of the intersections that we've built. So this is really nice for uh, for keeping your alignments uh, organized. Once the intersection is built, we can now uh, take a look at the, uh, the resulting corridor. So I'll go ahead and click on the corridor and go to the corridor properties. Perhaps I would like to create a surface so I can show the contours for the uh, top of the uh, corridor. and then I'll also add a boundary. And this is new for 2010. It will, it does a great job of determining the extents of your corridor and just simply adds a boundary. So the surface triangulation um, stays within that boundary. And you should see the contours pop in. The red ones are the minor contours and the green ones are the major contours. And you'll, uh, you'll see those contours. And notice the contouring doesn't happen outside of the boundary. It stays inside and that's, uh, that's fantastic. And we can look at this in three-dimensional view as well. And there's your uh, corridor in three, 3D view. And the last thing I want to show you is some new functionality with regard to the corridors. Um, if you take a look at the corridor properties here, just like we did before, you notice once you add these intersections, the parameters tab gets pretty, pretty, pretty complicated. There's a lot of things going on here with all our uh, baselines and our regions. What's really nice though is that I can highlight different baselines and regions and it uh, highlights in blue and red uh, those, uh, so those regions and baselines for me. And I can also zoom into those areas to take a look at them. And that's very helpful because it can get a little confusing after a while dealing with these, uh, these, these the, the, again, the baselines in the regions. And along those same lines, in the drawing, we can isolate regions. So if I click on a specific region, I can say, let's isolate that region. And this is handy. Perhaps you just want to do some work in this region. We can isolate it just like that. And then to unisolate it, we just go ahead and choose Show, uh, show All Region. If you would like to view the corridor in a section type view, we can go ahead and click on the corridor and then from a ribbon we can go to the corridor section editor and then that takes us to uh, uh, a screen where we can view the sections we could choose different baselines and view the sections at those baselines and flip from section to section as, uh, as desired so hopefully I've done an adequate job of showing you the new intersection design tools in Civil 3D 2010 Thank you.